Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know I have a Patreon? You can go over there and support the channel. Now onto the stories. Case file number 880, written by Hot Wings and Soda. Proof that we're immortal. I've told this to my friend at least a dozen times because he wants to make sense of it. This truly shook me. This happened on a road trip when I was 17, almost 18. It was me and my sister, a couple years older than me, and she was driving a super long beaten road throughout the desert. About two hours on the road passed, and suddenly I noticed that the car that was behind us veered off the road and came to a standstill. My sister audibly wonders what they're up to. A few dozen seconds later, there's this terrible series of bumps and cracks in the road that shake the car and knock the phone off the seat, taking the auxiliary out and halting the music. It lands close to me, so I pick it up and start to reconnect the phone. When I do, we get this random catchy ad about trash. The next thing of note happens seconds after the ad ends. I stare off into the window and I see a truck parked ahead of us. As we pass it, I stupidly kept looking at it, and the sheen it gave off, the glare from the sun completely blinded me for a bit. When I closed my eyes, I still saw the outline of it. I was afraid it was burned into my retinas when I finally opened my eyelids. It started to fade slowly, and all I can remember seeing after that is the emergency airbag in the car pop into my face and sounds of metal on metal. My vision started going black, and the image that's in my eyes from the truck fades away completely. But when it fades, I open my eyes to see us still driving like nothing happened. That's when I noticed the car behind us. Same license plate as before, same car, color, even the same driver to my eyes. The same thing happened again. The road being bad and bumping the phone down, the auxiliary disconnecting, and the same damn ad playing. All the while I'm panicking in my head since my sister dismissed my questions like nothing out of the ordinary happened. We come up to the truck again and I stare. My eyes again have the after image of it. Just as before, I hear metal scraping and feel the airbag pummel my face. As it fades, I'm scared to open my eyes again, but I hear my sister ask, What is that car doing? It forces my eyes open to see the same car for the third time, steering into the open desert before halting. I'm in full-blown panic mode as I looked ahead and see the crude road up ahead. I hold onto my phone for dear life and manage to stop the phone from disconnecting but we still get an ad when the next song plays. The same damn ad. As it nears its end, I stop myself from looking at the truck and instead look ahead, noticing that the car in the opposite lane is swerving slightly. I piece it together in my head and caution my sister about the driver in the car. She has to swerve to avoid the car as it goes into the wrong side of the road, barely missing our car thanks to my sister's driving. The rest of the trip went without much of a hitch. My friend said it may have been something like quantum immortality or a swamp between universes. I've always been interested in this stuff, but I have no clue how to explain my experience. Case Notes for File 880 Proof that we're immortal So is this a case of double quantum immortality? In theory, there's nothing that would prevent that. If you die in one universe, and you're transposed to another one, and then in that universe, the same circumstances, or even different circumstances in theory, could happen and trigger your death in that new universe, and then you're sent into another one altogether. In fact, I think it may happen pretty frequently, we're just not aware of it. Maybe not within the span of a couple minutes of being in a new universe, but in general, within days or weeks, yeah, because it's pretty easy to die as a human being. And indeed, there's nothing to say that the new universe has to be safe for you. It's just that we have almost unlimited lives. Hell, it's not inconceivable that you die and re-engage the same death many, 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 many times to such a point that you know how to avoid it, but it may take a lot of attempts. It reminds me of the movie Next where Nicolas Cage towards the end, where he can see into the future, but it's almost like in a way where he's dying and then restarting a few minutes back. It's almost identical to the situation you describe, which could actually play into quantum immortality. He's just seeing different variations of how he could move his body to avoid being shot at. And then eventually he knows exactly the pattern that the armed man is going to use to shoot him. And then he just avoids it perfectly and grabs the gun in that one universe. Of course, 
that armed man has no idea that he just went through a hundred copies of different scenarios at, at play, and then he found the one where he could navigate it properly. But given that we retain the information from past lives, past universes, it is in a certain sense almost unknown foresight. Could also play into déjà vu. Case file number 881. Written by Anonymous. An IQ so high it broke the matrix. I've always had déjà vu. Not every day, but I'll go through weeks where I get it a lot and weeks where I don't. The only difference between me and most people is that incidents are extreme and almost as if I can predict the future within about 10 seconds. I'm able to know exactly, word for word, what someone will say, even when it's something completely random. I know when traffic lights will change, even when they're in unfamiliar places. I know when someone is going to show up randomly at my house. These may all have explanations, maybe subconsciously just having a really good sense of time or knowing what someone will say, but one time this saved my life. I was driving with my mom and I started to get the feeling. She was driving and I don't know why she believed me, but I'm glad she did. I had told her about my other experiences, but I don't think she ever really believed me before. Anyway, we were driving and I knew that the car coming towards us was going to come onto the wrong side of the road. I told her something along the lines of, That car is going to come on the wrong side of the road, move over right now! As soon as I said it, the car on the other side came onto our side of the road and almost killed us exactly as I pictured it in my head a few seconds before. I think she moved over just to humor me, but it saved us from a likely deadly accident. This is just one example, but it's an extreme one, and ever since that day, my parents believe me when I know something is going to happen. Case notes for file 881. An IQ so high it broke the matrix. So just like the past story, I think it's related, it can be. The ability to foresee the future can depend on when you're transposed into another universe, if we live in a buffered reality as I think we do. In effect, we already made all the choices we're going to make, or at least for a good while, and then we're just here watching the replay. Maybe it is possible to take control, to restart from replay, in a sense, but I think most of the time we're just watching the replay and then we see how things are going based on the choices we already made. I think this was kind of the premise of The Matrix as well, which is interesting. The movie, I mean. And then it can even relate to errors in the processing of it. Because I think if we're in real time, in some moments, then the amount of computational power to process real-time images and physics and all of that is orders of magnitude greater than just watching a replay. Watching a replay of a game versus rendering out a frame of it is it's not even the same, it's not even close. You can watch a movie on a potato, pretty much. Probably literally you could, but you definitely can't play games on it. Well, I don't think so, maybe not yet. Reality is buffered and also quantumly immortal, so when we're dying, we're not really dying, we're just watching from maybe the real world, like jacked in, just to see how things went based on our choices. And then if we die, well, we're just switching servers and then just continuing. But we can continue or restart from like 10 seconds in the past. And I'm just going crazy here in my mind, but maybe there's buffered realities where we already made our choices. But then if we die in those and we restart in a new one, then we actually are in control. We're not just watching. So maybe there's buffered realities, but then when you die and you're going through quantum mortality, in that immediate moment after, you have to restart. It's like watching a replay and then just jumping into a new match after trying to perfect it. Saved lives and just going back, like playing Crash Bandicoot back in the day and dying and just trying to beat the damn thing, but then watching someone else play and, you know, it's along those lines, but it's really watching yourself play. Huh, it's really cool. Makes your head spin a bit. Case file number 882, written by Unicorn Girl 24. The universe is gaslighting me. About five weeks ago, my husband and I had a family emergency in which we left our house rather quickly. When we returned home, it was still in the middle of a work week, so I unpacked our suitcases and threw the clothes into our laundry room and just kind of tossed any other items on the shelf in our bedroom. Two days later, I realized my wallet was missing. I knew without a doubt that I had put it in one of my suitcase pockets, so I checked there first, but it wasn't there. I checked the same pocket on my husband's suitcase as well, thinking he had mistakenly placed it in there. Still nothing. 
But I know, even in my haste to unpack and prepare to go back to work, I saw the wallet. My husband then tells me he remembers seeing it on the bed the night we got home, and I remembered seeing it too. I remembered seeing him move it to the shelf when he came to get into bed. Two weeks go by and I can't find it, but I haven't panicked because I know we both have seen it inside the house, so it has to be somewhere stupid. Like I put it in the cabinet or something when I was getting ready for work. Three weeks go by and I have checked the suitcases again probably 15 times just to recheck. The weekend of the third week, we travel out of town and use the suitcases again. I pack and unpack, nothing of note. Five weeks later, this weekend, we decided to go out of town and I'm packing my suitcase and see a weird bulge in one of the pockets. It's the wallet. I'm not sure what kind of glitch happened but I know I have checked that pocket at least 20 times to make sure I wasn't just missing it. But there it was, plain as day. The universe is gaslighting me. So while the universe does seem to be unstable, at least in some respect, may maybe the universe we're occupying now, I'm not sure if this relates to that. It might just be a trickster that's trying to mess with you. Because it just seems so precisely attuned to exactly what you would need for a prank because it reappeared exactly where you know you checked like 20 times as you mentioned. So if I was a trickster and I really wanted to mess with someone, that's what I would do. I would want to do it in a way where I could tell them that I was messing with them at least a couple hours after, you know, get their reaction and then say, okay, you're not crazy. Don't worry. It's just me. <laughs> Those are my notes for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, like the video and subscribe. Tell your friends. Let's be merry. <laughs>